I want to say good morning and welcome again. We're together continuing our journey as we listen, learn, love, and lean in here at University Mennonite Church, and as we move toward the Thanksgiving holiday here in the United States this week. I want to say thank you again to those of you who continue to send in pictures and videos of how you've been spending this pandemic time. This helps us feel much more like we are connected across the vision, across divide, across quarantine, and that we are sharing or able to see glimpses of each other's lives. And so thank you for participating in this way. Uh, thank you to Joel for being our video sharing person again this morning. And Joel, whenever you're ready, please go ahead and share our prelude video this morning. For each hand we hold Gathered round this table From far and near we travel home Blessed that we are able Grateful for this sheltered place with light in every window Saying welcome, welcome, share this feast Come in away from sorrow Father, mother, daughter, son Neighbor, friend and friend Loving kindness. Grateful for what's understood and all that is forgiven we try so hard to be good to lead a life worth living father mother daughter son Let grateful days be endless Grateful for each hand we hold Gathered round this table Good morning and welcome this morning as we once again come together in Zoom to worship. And as we enter into this holiday season, um, I th that's traditionally called the holiday season, I think we should remember what the words holiday stem from. The original roots are holy days in the church. Nowadays, we just sort of think it's a time, a day off from work and time to have fun. But let's try to recapture some of the uh, holiness of that. And, and at this very uh, somber time and strange time of year, um, with so many hopes and fears, um, it's, it's let's try to reclaim some of the holiness in our service today. And let's begin by listening to parts of Psalm 65 as we remember the many blessings in this world that God has given us. Praise 
is due to you, O God. You visit the earth and water it. You greatly enrich it. The river of God is full of water. You provide the people with grain, for so you have prepared it. Your water, you water its furrows abundantly, settling its ridges, softening it with showers and blessing its growth. You crown the year with your bounty. Your wagon tracks overflow with richness. The pastures of the wilderness overflow. The hills gird themselves with joy. The meadows clothe themselves with flocks. The valleys deck themselves with grain. They shout and sing together for joy. So be it. As we um, transition to our tradition of lighting the peace lamp, uh, it seems fitting that at this time, we stop again to remember that is, even as we live, listen to these words of thankfulness from, um, for God's blessings, we live in a world of hurt, and pain, brokenness, and death. And it's also fitting that we pause and um, come together before God to beg him to find his mercy and guidance that we can both become light in what is now a very dark world. I, I admit I've, I've never been so ashamed as I am this, this time um, as, as I have about my country right now. And um, I've been just horrified to see all of the, the current pandemic and the struggles and the wars and the deaths that are going on right now. But we remember when Peter spoke to um, in John and said, Lord, to whom shall we go? You alone have the words of eternal life. Jesus, as the light of the world, promises to be with us and in us as we light this lamp, both in remembrance of his words and of his promise to help us to be the lights, his lights in the world. And now let us share our tithes and offerings to God as we are able in gratitude and hope.
Good morning, everybody. We're thinking about Thanksgiving here at Plowshare Produce this week uh, because we're harvesting lots of vegetables. And whenever we harvest a lot of vegetables, it makes us feel thankful. Ben, would you lift up the crate that you're sitting on and show everyone our bushel crates that we keep vegetables in here? See if you can lift it up so everyone can see it. Here, let's put it right here. This not on Timo's head, though. Not on Timo's head. Whew. This is a big bushel crate that we keep vegetables in. And right now, you can put it down. Right now in our cooler, we have stacks and stacks and stacks of those vegetables, of those crates with vegetables in them. And we're gonna show you some of the vegetables that we have stored in our cooler right now. Um, let's see. We have sweet potatoes. And we have beans. Parsnips. Parsnips. Those are parsnips. And what else is in here? And, and squash. Yeah. We have squash, butternut squash. And we have. Here's another parsnip. And this is a rutabaga. Lots of rutabagas. And we have celeriac that tastes kind of like celery. And we have. We have watermelon radishes. Yum. Yeah. What's this, Timo? And, and oh. we have cabbage. Crates yeah. of cabbage. And can you hold on to the cabbage, Daniel? And oh, have, crates of garlic. And, and plates and of potatoes. Potatoes. And we also have lots of crates of of onions. These are and red. This onions. is a Kennebec potato. And uh, and. Watermelon. There's another water, watermelon radish. Yep. So I think that's everything in our basket. But we have stacks of food right now in our cooler, and it makes me feel rich to have all those vegetables, even though we know that they actually belong to our CSA members. Some of you will be getting those vegetables in your shares this winter. And all of that abundance makes me think of this song. We sing this song a lot in our family. It goes, praise to God, immortal praise, for the love that crowns our days, bounteous source of every joy. Let thy praise our tongues employ. And then there's a second verse that goes, for the blessings of the field, for the stores the gardens yield, for the joy which harvest brings, grateful praises now we sing. So we love that song and we sing it a lot, but some people don't know there's actually many verses to that song here to me. And, and this is, I'm gonna read you two of the other verses. They go like this. Lord, should rising whirlwinds tear from the stem the ripening ear, ears of corn, ripening ears of corn? Should the fig tree's blasted shoot drop her green untimely fruit? Should the vine put forth no more, nor the olive yield her store, though the sickening flocks should fall and the herds desert the stall. So those are all things that could happen to harvests that do happen and have happened to us. Two, two falls ago, we tried to harvest our carrots and it rained and rained and rained and rained and a lot of our carrots that we were going to store in the cooler for the winter rotted in the ground. So we know what that's like. And the person who wrote this hymn probably knows what that's like. They said, Lord, should all these things happen to our figs and our corn and our olives and our flocks, should our sickening flocks fall? Um, and then they said, should all those things happen yet 
To thee my soul should raise grateful vows and solemn praise. And when every blessing's flown, love thee for thyself alone. So this hymn and, and the scriptures that we read about being grateful and thankful say that. No, not that. Oops. Sorry about that. <laughs> so the scriptures about being thankful say that even when things go wrong, even when our crops fail, we still can be thankful. We still can praise God and love him just for being God's self. So um, we'll leave that message with you this Thanksgiving. And of course, hope that your, your lives feel abundant, but even in scarcity, we still give thanks, knowing that God holds us in, in God's hands and God loves us. So God bless you this week as you celebrate Thanksgiving, and remember all the things you have to be grateful for. Deuteronomy chapter 8. This entire commandment that I command you today, you must diligently observe so that you may live and increase and go in and occupy the land that the Lord promised on oath to your ancestors. Remember the long way that the Lord your God has led you these 40 days in the wilderness. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with flowing streams, with springs, and underground waters welling up in valleys and hills. A land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land where you may eat bread without scarcity, where you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron, and from whose hills you may mine copper. You shall eat your fill and bless the Lord your God for the good land that God has given you. Take care that you don't forget the Lord your God by failing to keep God's commandments, ordinances, and statutes, which I am commanding you today. When you have eaten your fill and have built fine houses and live in them, and when your herds and flocks have multiplied and your silver and gold is multiplied and all that you have is multiplied, then do not exalt yourself, forgetting the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who led you through the great and terrible wilderness, an arid wasteland with poisonous snakes and scorpions. God made water flow for you from flint rock, and fed you in the wilderness with manna that your ancestors did not know, to humble you and to test you, and in the end, to do you good. Do not say to yourself, my power and the might of my own hand have gained me this wealth. But remember, the Lord your God, for it is God who gives you power to get wealth, so that God may confirm the covenant sworn to your ancestors, as God is doing today. Amen. Good morning, brothers and sisters, siblings in Christ. 
Let's begin with a full breath. Receiving the Spirit of God. Pray with me. O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing to you, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Our scripture this morning said, Remember the long way that the Lord your God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness. Take care that you do not forget the Lord your God. When you have eaten your fill and all that you have is multiplied, then do not exalt yourself, forgetting the Lord your God who brought you out of the house of slavery. Do not say to yourself, my power and the might of my own hand have gained me this wealth. But remember the Lord your God, for it is God who gives you power. Mm, we hear remember, do not forget. These stories of Moses leading the people from slavery through 40 years, 40 years of wilderness to the promised land took place somewhere around 1200 BCE. But this part of the book of Deuteronomy where we find this story wasn't written down for another 600 years during the reign of King Josiah during a very dark time in their history. Because the Israelites before then had been all but wiped out by the Assyrians and then they were led by a series of kings, some like Manasseh, Josiah's father, who attempted to totally eradicate the worship of God from the Jewish state. It was only when the book of law was found as the temple was being rebuilt during Josiah's time that the Israelites restored their faith and worship in the one true God, Yahweh. So the story of Moses telling the people to remember, remember where you were, remembering who you are, whose you are. It then became the story of the people who were rebuilding centuries later. And here it is again centuries later for us today. Remember, do not forget. Our psalm reminds us this as well. Praise is due to you, O God. You provide the people with grain. You crown the year with bounty. The psalmist too remembers that it is God who brings all these things, not the work of human hands. Remember. Why this call again and again throughout scripture to remember? We remember so that we can move forward with hope, with courage, as a resilient people, not being crushed by the challenges that surround us. Jesus told his disciples, remember this night as they celebrated the Passover, that celebration of remembering how God brought new life out of suffering. And then Jesus gave us a new way to remember. Remember me, he said. Remember me every time you break bread together, every time you are nourished. Remember that death does not have the last word. Remember that love overcomes fear. Remember, Jesus says, I am here, always with you. We remember, my friends, so that in times of struggle, we are not paralyzed. We remember so that we can continue the journey. Remembering helps us stay balanced. When my children were young, one Christmas, a relative gave them a balance board. They played and played on it some getting the hang of it more easily than others. 
One of my sons, Jesse, spent a huge amount of time on it, mastering it to a level close to this. I, I never got the hang of it. I couldn't stay balanced for even a few seconds. So I called Jesse this week and asked him what it took to successfully navigate a balance board. And right away he said, you have to have a willingness to fall. You have to know that it's going to happen and be okay with it. And he went on, it takes total focus. When you're on the board, you can't be thinking about something else. You need to concentrate on what's happening in the body right now. You need to be fully present. He said he loved that it was so dynamic. It was like a physical chess match, he said. Every action having an equal, equal and opposite reaction. And now, as an adult looking back, he feels it helped him learn to be okay with failure. Losing balance was, is a part of mastery, no matter the task. Well, I tell that story this morning because I believe if we only look back, it throws us off balance. We look back to learn. We look back so we can look forward and move ahead with hope. And yet what we learn when we look back is not always easy and beautiful. Learning requires being okay with failure and a willingness to lose balance again and again. Jesus' command to remember him is woven together throughout our scripture with stories of betrayal and denial. In remembering, it's important to hold the whole story. I watched a video this week that's part of the Teaching Tolerance series put out by the Southern Poverty Law Center entitled, The Forgotten Slavery of Our Ancestors. It's short, only 12 minutes long, teaching about the untold history of how over 5 million Native Americans were enslaved by the white European settlers. It blows apart our Thanksgiving narrative. And this is a part of our history of which I was totally unaware. It's been a humbling learning. Paula Peters, educator and writer from the Wampanoag tribe, ends the video by saying, if you don't know the whole story, you're going to walk away with a fairy tale. Remembering, staying balanced requires we learn the whole story and that we sit with our whole story, all of it, the beautiful and the painful. Well, we are at a time of moral reckoning here in our country, taking a hard look at what we choose to remember and what we choose to forget, whether it's our history from centuries ago or the way we live into the reality of the stresses of politics and viruses. We must remember, we must sit with our whole story to stay balanced and to find ways forward with hope. Our scripture today from Deuteronomy also give hints of a painful, complex past. Moses reminds the people of the promise God made to their ancestors that they will inherit a land that is already occupied. The displacement of people from the land is a part of our religious history. Really, it's a story as old as humanity. Here, from the beginning of our scripture, we learn stories of God blessing a chosen people, blessing them with land inhabited by others. The story of Moses leading the people to freedom is a beautiful, faith-filled story that helps us remember 
It's a story that gives us strength to look back where we're from, where we've come from, and to move ahead with hope. And yet, a faithful remembering involves holding the whole story, those blessed and those forgotten. Remembering it all helps us stay balanced, helps us not turn our histories into fairy tales. Moses commands the people, remember. And we remember so that we can make the kingdom of God known here and now. Yes, now, during times like these. Times that feel dark and scary with little hope can throw us off balance. This coming week, this celebration of Thanksgiving likely won't be like those we remember from years past. We may feel out of balance, both thankful and grieving the loss of traditions that bring so much joy. Remembering helps us stay balanced. Giving thanks is a remembering. Giving thanks for what's here right now, as meager or as abundant as it may seem, is a way of staying balanced. And this remembering through the lens of giving thanks, it helps us to be resilient, to change and adapt in ways that help us live out of a sense of hope. We give thanks for those we love. We give thanks for this day, whatever it holds. We give thanks for our health, for as author John Kabat-Zinn writes, as long as you're breathing, there is more right with you than there is wrong, no matter how ill or how hopeless you may feel. We stay balanced by remembering the past and living right now in new ways. Like the way one of you told me about how you're going to share a Thanksgiving meal with neighbors. I love this resilient creativity. They've each chosen to make a part of the meal and will deliver it to each other's front door by a prescribed time on Thanksgiving Day eating by themselves in their own homes, but not alone. Shared gifts of food and presence will nourish. New ways to give thanks together. Staying balanced is also remembering that our reality is only one part of a larger world around us. Struggles for human rights and justice continue to rage in our country and around the world. Hope, resilience, life, they rise out of dark places. In his book, Who Will Be a Witness? Author Drew Hart tells story after story of black prophetic voices. One was of Henry Highland Garnett. Trained as a minister, Mr. Garnett called out the church for its failure to stand up for enslaved people. In his most famous speech, challenging the enslaved not to submit any longer to oppression, he urged, let your motto be resistance, resistance, resistance. Trust in the living God, he said labor for the peace of the human race. Out of resistance, he called them to trust in the living God. These African-American pastors and prophets of the late 1800s remind us to remember. Remember who you are. Remember who gives life, who sets the captives free. Look back and remember so that you can stay balanced, stay strong in the struggles of today, knowing that our hope is found in a faith that often rises up out of bleakness. 
We're going to end this sermon time with a song by the group Resistance Revival Chorus. It's a song of resistance, a song of joy, a song that speaks against the powers and principalities of this world, reminding us that our hope, our joy, our strength, our peace is found in something so much greater than anything this world has to offer. It's a song that has kept me balanced these past few weeks, helping me remember to trust in the living God, to labor for the peace of the human race. I pray you too will find it so. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. Oh, this joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. Don't you know that? This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. Oh, I said the, the world didn't give it. The world can't take it away. Oh, this strength that I have, this strength that I have. This strength that I have. Oh, yeah, now. The world didn't give it to me. The world didn't give it to me. This strength that I have. The world didn't give it to me. The strength that I have. Oh, yeah. The world didn't give it to me. Oh, I said, the world didn't give it. The world can't take it away. Oh, this love, this love that I have. This love that I have. Oh, yeah, now. The world didn't give it to me. The world didn't give it to me. This love that I have. To me, don't you know that this love that I have, yeah, the world didn't give it to me. Singing, the world didn't give it, the world can't take it away. Oh, this pride that I have, this pride that I have. I said the, the world, world didn't give it to me. Don't you know that? This pride that I have, yeah. The world didn't give it to me. Oh, I said the, the world, world didn't give it. The world can't take it away. All this peace that I have. That I have. Oh, yeah. The world didn't give it to me. The world didn't give me my this peace. Sing about this peace. peace that I have. Oh, yeah, now. The world didn't give it to me. Mm -hmm. I said, the, the world didn't give it. The world can't take it away. All oh, this joy that I have, this joy that I have. This joy that I have. Oh, yeah, now. The world yeah. didn't give it to yeah, me. The world didn't give it to me. This joy oh, that oh, I have. No. I said, the, the world, world didn't give it to me. me. Don't you know that? This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. Oh, I said, the world didn't give it, the world can't take it away. The world didn't give it, and the world can't take it away. The world didn't give it, the world can't take it away. The world didn't give it, and the world can't take it away. The world didn't give it, the world can't take it away. The world didn't give it, and the world can't take it away. And all God's people said, amen. Well, brothers and sisters, we are going to move now into a time of remembering, a time of remembering through the celebration of communion. We don't usually turn to the Gospel of Matthew when we uh, share in communion. But early this morning, as I was reading through the end of Matthew, it struck me. Um, it struck me where as they were sharing the Passover meal, Jesus says, truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became distressed. And he went on and said, 
It would have been better that whoever has done this, whoever did this, it would have been better that they weren't born. So we have that, we have that call to betrayal that each one, each one who dips their hand in the cup somehow betrayed him. And it's only a couple verses later in hearing the whole story, just a couple verses later, when he shares the bread and the cup, that he says, drink from it. He says, I tell you, I will never drink of the vine until the day when I drink it with you, when I drink it with you new in my father's kingdom. So both naming that they're going to betray and that they're going to share it all again together. Like what, what a gift of hope our scriptures are. So before we move in to the receiving of the bread and the cup, I'd like to take a few moments together and confess because betrayal of one another, betrayal of God is a part of all of our lives. So let's just take a few moments of silence. Simply remembering and confessing to God those ways we have fallen short. Join me in reading this prayer of confession together. Please stay muted, but read with me. Almighty God, whose breath quickens us, whose tongue named us, whose language we are, grant us grace to be true words, not gentle when it is in anger that we live, not smooth when it is desperation that we know, not patient when time has mar narrowed down to now, not wise, not neat, not all our fences mended, but words, broken yet honest words, and lost, stumbling their way towards silence. Take us back, recall us, then speak us once again. Set us in order, mend our shattered syntax, set all our commas straight, imbue in us a power that keeps company with pain. Then march us across the pages of this beautiful, fragile, tormented and perishable earth to sing the songs of Zion. In the name of the word made flesh, made dead and made alive again, amen. Mm. Jesus opens the table, opens and says, receive. It's not so much a taking as we receive this gift. We receive it. Yes, on the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, the simple loaf, and he broke it. And he gave it to his friends saying, receive, receive my love, receive this that nourishes. And remember, every time you eat, remember me. And then as the meal was coming to an end, he took the cup and he poured, he poured out that life giving wine. And he said, take and drink. Every time you drink, remember, remember me and have hope, hope that new life rises out of dark places. So brothers and sisters, we are going to listen to a song and I invite you to be nourished, to receive God's grace because none of us, none of us deserve it. We didn't earn it. It is a gift. So receive the bread and the cup, whatever you have in front of you. Receive these gifts as God's gracious act towards us. Come. 
The table is ready. I don't know if you heard in that song that I was offering communion. I was offering grapes to the children of our congregation, reminding them by name that they are known. Known and loved. That just uh, to hear those names, to hear Alethea and Cedric and Daniel and Ben and Amy and all those children named. Let's end communion together by reciting the Lord's Prayer, this prayer that helps us remember whose we are. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory now and forever. Amen. Well, as we draw our service to an end, I just wanna remind you that there'll be breakout rooms and that there is Sunday school again at 11. This is our last in our Sunday school series. And even if you didn't come to any of the others, if you're interested in thinking together about how we move forward as we consider what it is as individuals and as a congregation to work for justice uh, along racial lines, please join us at 11. I'm wondering if we have any birthdays or anniversaries though to celebrate together this week. Leah W., I had a milestone birthday plus one yesterday. Happy birthday, Leah. Anyone else? Marvin's birthday is tomorrow. Marvin, excellent. Well, happy birthday to both of you, past and future. Yes, happy birthday, everyone. Any visitors with us this morning that we should uh, know about? Please unmute yourself and just tell us your name. Hmm. Well, brothers and sisters, receive this benediction. May you go out today remembering, remembering that this joy that we have, the world didn't give it to you, didn't give it to me. This faith that we have, this love, this peace that we have, the world didn't give it to us. Remember that it is the one who brought us the bread and cup, who out of brokenness said, you are mine and I love you. Go forth into the world spreading that good news. 
May you go in peace this day. Amen.